All right, welcome back to the infuser. Yeah, I should grab my glass. Cheers. Yeah, cheers. Happy uh, Cinco de Mayo. It is, yeah. it is. We're drinking whiskey on Cinco tequila. de Mayo. My yeah. Tequila is whiskey. I know. So okay, so now you know Danny from Bardstown. So tell us, tell us how you guys know each yeah, other and and how 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 we connected we, to get here today. We've been getting to know each other over the past two years since my first visit to Bardstown, uh, 2018. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Danny was nice enough to show me around, and not only that, I mean, we had a we had a fantastic time. We tried every cocktail on the menu, which they have a full cocktail bar, which I think sits adjacent to your whiskey library, and, and uh, we'll ask you to tell us about that in a second. But yeah, it's a Bardstown is an amazing experience. If you're going to Kentucky, it should be at the top of your list, and we're just excited to have some of the amazing Bardstown products in front of us, which. We will taste uh, on our actual full podcast um, in, a, in a moment, but on this live tasting here, we've got uh, Dan Calloway from from Bardstown Bourbon. Danny, say hi. <laughs> yeah, hey. Well, th thank you so much for having me on. This is awesome. Love the setup you guys have, and, and appreciate you guys drinking through some products. And yeah, that was that was an awesome day when you visited. And I love what you said about experience because that's what it's all about. We call it the modern bourbon experience. Um, you can come, you can try a cocktail, over 400 vintage whiskeys, a restaurant that looks right into the distillery, tours, tastings. We just built out an awesome private room attached to our main Rick House. And what we really encourage people, what we want people to do is just come hang out, spend the day and have a, uh, try a new way to experience bourbon. So, so what's in this private room? Yeah, well, we just built it. It's called Pete's Place, and it actually opened up the weekend that we closed for uh, COVID-19. Oh, which was... oh, gosh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But uh, I, it's the most incredible room on the trail. Um, it's the only one of its kind. It's um, where a private bar attached to a Rick house. So you can, you can do a barrel pick. You can walk through a glass door, and you're right there, surrounded by barrels. And then there's kind of a plush lounge, different aesthetic than the main room where you can you can hang out and enjoy them and yeah. get something to eat. And uh, we just opened that as kind of a new private room. I'll add that the fried chicken is some of the best food I've had in the state of Kentucky. <laughs> I've been to Kentucky about four times now, I'm going for a fifth time this year soon. And been to all the restaurants I tell you to eat at, um, you know, Proof on Main and you know, Rye on Market and all those great restaurants. And Bardstown Bourbon Company <laughs> is like top, top, top tier. You've mentioned that yeah. chicken, that fried chicken sandwich multiple times now. Um, and yeah, there's, <laughs> there's, there's, there's also just the fried chicken. And oh, okay, like okay. enough fries to last you. Yeah. The shitty part was we were in an RV with five guys for my 30th birthday when we went there the first time. Um, Cause I've been to Bardstown twice now and we got the fries and we left them in the RV and the next day the whole woke up the whole <laughs> smelled like french fries. We couldn't finish That's it. That's not we, the worst thing that can see. Yeah. So many fries. It was just ridiculous how much food we ate and bought and got and it was crazy. <laughs> oh my god. Flashbacks right now. <laughs> so now okay, so you you kind of handle a lot of different things at Bardstown. Can you tell us a little bit about like where what do you got your hands in <laughs> yeah well well the cool thing about bar is that it's a new company right so we're growing we started in 2016 started distilling you know in that time we've doubled twice we're now um top 10 size in distillery about number seven in there but um From we do standpoint? on production on uh, we do seven million proof gallons a year coming out wow. of there uh which is just wow. in, in three years to put that together it's pretty astounding so with that, with a small company, a tight knit group, um, comes everyone kind of doing a little bit of everything, you know. So I'm definitely on the front facing side. I initially set up the bar with an awesome team, the restaurant, then the tours. But along the way, do a lot of the blending, you know, um, the product development, uh, setting up collaborations, working with um, the whole team um, is is blenders essentially at Bardstown. That's one of the coolest things about the products you have in your hand. The culinary team, beverage team, distilling team, we all work on those blends together. So everyone is a part of the of the. So whole it's like a democratic and, thing. Everybody gets a vote to what the yeah. ultimate. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> it's great. We do it all through blind tasting. Yeah. 
Here's a question we haven't asked you um, in any of our conversations. I never asked anyone this. Is Bartstown's goal to always blend, or is there a goal to get to a straight bourbon whiskey of a certain age that has not been blended at all? Absolutely. Awesome question. Yes. Um, so we'll cool. always celebrate the art of blending. We love the approach we take on blending. Our oldest product's about three and a half years old now. When September of 2020 comes around, we'll hit four years. We're looking at that six-year mark. Um, we'll have a high rye bourbon, weeded bourbon, uh, a true rye. Um, we, we're looking at coming out with those those 100% estate distilled products then. We just don't want to release early. We, we really feel like so many distilleries make the mistake coming out at two years, and it's just not where we want to be. You guys are in a hurry. You put out award-winning, top accolade products that are blended, and no one seems to be batting an eye at the fact that they're blends. Nobody, you know, sorry, I'm talking and drinking. Um, nobody sees the bat and eye at brands like High West or other blenders that are winning such awards and getting that sort of prestige. So you have all the time in the world. As long as you can keep putting out stuff that is similar or as good or better than this. Um, yeah. And certain brands. And, and especially these. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and the cool thing that we talked about um Bardstown is you guys sort of you, you check off three boxes that most distilleries only check one. You're distilling, you're blending, and you're finishing. And a lot of distilleries do one or two of those things. Very rarely do you see all three under one roof. And so tell us about the decisions to do that. Yeah. Well, you touched on a lot of things there. That's uh so we can go into it. The main thing is the decision um, to to follow this path with the Fusion Series, where it's a blend of our product and sourced, right? That's a goal, a way to release our juice into the market. It slowly develops, gets older. The blend gets older, and it's a, it's it's a way to have to see what we're creating with not a hundred percent all young whiskey. Fully transparent, we put it right on the side of the label, right? So you can see exactly what you're getting. 60% ours, 40% um, sourced. The reason we're able to do that is through our custom distillation program. So we make, a, it's around mid 40s now. Last number I heard was 48 different mash bills for 25 different customers. Wow. So most distilleries maybe distill one or two. We have over 40 custom distilled recipes that are going out to different customers. Wow. Customers like Kentucky Owl, Bell Mead, Jefferson's, High West, um, all kinds of companies we make front end customized products for. So in the past, if you wanted to source some bourbon, you kind of took what you got from say an MGP or a big Kentucky distillery, the juice they had left over, you could buy um, third marketer directly, but what you got was you got, there was no interaction. This is a yeah. true partnership, it's customization, we're making a recipe with their master distillers to their specifications. So that that program enables us to have enough revenue up front where we can wait on our own whiskey to release. And we just learn a ton hanging out with the other distillers. And, and that collaboration will continue because we learn so much from it. And you guys collaborate uh, on the finishes as well because I know that was one of the things that we – just found so fascinating the different types of finishing that you guys are using. So can you tell us a little bit about how that process works and how you come up with deciding what you want to finish and what, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So we just, you know, uh, we had a Cabernet Winbessa class uh, for finished whiskey, San Francisco spirits. Pretty incredible. That was a Fife of Pabot Cabernet. We just had an Armagnac come out. We're setting up. Yeah. Uh, that's the Prisoner uh, blend, a different Cabernet. So we I had multiple. Yeah, multiple beer finishes. Uh, we're we're looking at a cognac finish, a rum finish. How we decide it is we we work with distilleries and distillers who we enjoy and who we want to celebrate because we're fully transparent. I'll hold up this um, prisoner bottle. On our finishing, we put their name and their logo right on the back. So it's we're not just saying finished in Cabernet. It's a true collaboration between two companies. We do a ton with Copper and Kings. We love what they're doing. Um, so that's how we determine who we're gonna, yeah, who we're gonna distill with. And then the process, we feel like we've really we're onto something 
uh, when we take barrels, cold store, right? Um, seal them immediately, put them in a refrigerated truck, the Cabernet, drive it immediately across the country. The second it hits the distillery, we pop it open and put fresh bourbon in. So there's no degradation in the barrel. And then we're patient to wait a longer time. A lot of finishes you'll see are about six months. Um, those you have in front of you, those are the 18 month, 19 month finishes. So we really give it time for the flavors to meld together. So, yeah. How much experimentation goes into that? And, and my question really is, you know, have you messed anything up in trying to collaborate? Like, ha, yeah, you know, yeah. open it at 19 months. Oh, that's too long. Maybe six yeah. months is the right amount of time. Or you it's taste kind of like, uh. Yeah, it's like Bob Ross. You know, it's like a happy little mistake, right? So it's uh, you you learn something in that. So on the wine, um, there was uh, one of the finishes we did. There was a Cabernet. There was a barrel we we thought maybe went wasn't quite lining up. We didn't put it into the blend, even though it was a small amount. We held it back. We'll see what happens as it goes further. You know, once we get into that twenty-four month finished bourbon, we're in uncharted waters. There, we we you know we're still learning this. Different floors of the Rick House. Um, a big thing sure. is, you know, we have a big rum finish coming up soon, trying to decide what type of mash bill, what type of bourbon to put in that barrel. Um, <laughs> you experiment, you know, you get the rum, you get the bourbon, you see what flavor profiles line up. But when you get in a large production, that's a pretty big gamble. You know, you talk about 80 barrels or something. You want to make sure you get the, uh, the flavor lined up correctly. I so, say a high rye, yeah. high rye bourbon for your rum finish is my opinion. Yeah, yeah. I, I, well, I, yeah, spicy, spicy to cut the sweet. sweet. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's That's interesting. With the amazing. wine, we've done a lot of Tennessee with the high corn. Um, we found that lines up. And then high rye with rum is just an awesome call. So Yeah, I think high know. rye with rum. I mean, I, I've got some uh, rum finished rye whiskeys uh, right behind us, <laughs> right over there on the wall. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, they're, they're very, very good. Um, yeah. So we've got Fusion 1 and Fusion 2. It looks like both of these are using the, as you said already, the, Bur the Bardstown bourbon, distilled mm -hmm. uh, bourbons. And they're 60% your stuff, 40% um, another Kentucky sure. Fillers uh, sourced 11-year-old. Wait, do we and, know what? Are you allowed to say yeah. who? No, that's the interesting part. So we... we are transparent on everything we possibly can be. That's why there's so much <laughs> glass in the distillery. When the one thing, when you buy third party, we can't say uh, who we purchase from. What we can do is put the mash bill on the side, so you can you can do your own investigations. Um, you got to think. Twelve years ago, there weren't too many distilleries in Kentucky that were selling bourbon. You know, so and like you uh, said, a lot of those distilleries are just doing one or two mash bills. And somewhere yeah. in the world, I have a master list of, I actually found online, all of the major distilleries, Jack Daniels, Jim Beam, Heaven Hill, what mash bills and what products use what mash bills. We did this on the, um, we have another episode of our podcast, if you guys haven't heard it yet, that are listening in. Um, it was called Table Bourbons with Dan Dunn and Tom. Uh, called Tom to be Tom honor, yeah. And we, we looked at the mash bills of some of these classic Heaven Hill, Old Granddad, uh, mm. Early Times, you know, uh, Brown Foreman. Crow. Stuff. Crow. Oh, yeah. Uh, it's a gym. I think it's no. Crow is actually owned by Bacardi at this point, I believe. But oh. again, you, you look at the mash bills of these. So I, I might pull that list out and see if I can. <laughs> yeah. um, but the, so I just, the cool thing, yeah, the cool thing about the mash bills, too, on our side, it's it's both a high rye and a weeded. So it's actually a four grain bourbon. There's a high rye, 40, 42% of it is a 36 high rye bourbon. Yeah. So 42% of the total is a bourbon with a 36% rye contact uh, content. Then 18% is a classic weeded bourbon. So that nice. makes up 60%. So it's actually a four grain bourbon, um, which is pretty cool. And that did win number 11, uh, Whiskey Advocate, uh, Best Whiskeys of 2019. Uh, I think one did. One did. Yeah. I'll look at the article. Okay. I thought it was, I thought it was Fusion 2 uh, so, last year, right? It could have been two. Yeah, last year. Two. Maybe yeah. it's two. I could be wrong on that. That's very possible. But the cool thing is between Fusion 1 and Fusion 2, it's the same mash bill, same three bourbons going into it. Each bourbon is just a little older. 
Mm. You know, so you're kicking up to 12 years on the sourced. You get full three years on Fusion 2. So it's just you're taking the same idea and you're just seeing the progression of age as it goes. So and they're very cool. different. They're, they're very, very different. different. That's one of the Fusion 2. Fusion 2 now. Yeah. Fusion 2 is a lot richer. Uh, it, it's, 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 it's richer. There's more Apple, I think, on Fusion 1, more, more young uh, brightness on 1, and we're starting to see development on 2. Um, so two's it's, it's a little more chocolate and a little more, um, a lot more barrel. Yeah. yeah, a little more char and almost a yeah. little more astringency on the nose. Yeah, it's a little hotter than yeah. one. That's one of the things that I really like about Fusion One is that it's 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 so well balanced and so, yeah. you know, the body is so fantastic and rich with sweetness and and it, and it it goes really well. There's yeah, there's like you said, Danny. One is brighter, but two is a little thicker. It's got yep. a little more meat to it. I think people will like that in general, but I find the brightness really nice. So I might be the contrarian in thinking that I do like one better than two. I this do too. My second time trying these yeah. back to back. I was I was curious if it was going to hold the same. Yeah, I know. It changes. <laughs> changes. No, and one is so good in cocktails for that reason because it's got enough enough depth to hold its own, but all that brightness can cut right through, so it makes them. Awesome, awesome cocktails. Yeah. Yeah. Now, how, it's a great sipper too. How big are the batches on Fusion? How many cases or bottles or barrels go into these? Yeah, it's so it's it's starting to increase. Um, with, you know, although our distillation grew dramatically, you know, very quickly from 1.5 million gallons all the way up to seven in just three years. Um, yeah. our distribution is a very slow, deliberate build. So we started out uh, just five states, the Bourbon Trail, Kentucky, Tennessee, Indiana, up to Chicago, Northern California, and Florida. That's it. Then this year, we're adding Colorado, Texas, D.C., Delaware, Maryland, um, and then and Las Vegas. And then we'll slowly expand from there about five states a year. So long answer to the question is is not a huge production on any of these we're starting to ramp it up as we go yeah yeah Yeah. which is so interesting to me because you mentioned how quickly your production ramped up Mm -hmm. and yet you're still kind of taking distribution a little bit slow i mean that has to have been that had to have been a very deliberate business decision up front you know absolutely it gives us a lot of freedom um, to do what we want to do because we'll have that custom distillation supporting the business model. Yeah. You know, absolutely. so as we grow, then we can take more of the juice towards BBC products. Um, but initially, getting off the ground, you got to think bourbon is such a crazy business to get into. You got to build the distillery, you got to hire the people, you got to distill it, then you got to wait. You're looking at 10 years, you know, at least yeah. before there's a you're really year. selling product. a lot of money in, a long bad. time to get it out. <laughs> but, right. But, and, from a business standpoint, anyone listening that's getting into the business, um, which may be very few given, you know, it, it's worth mentioning it's uh, early May and we're still at the, I hope to say the tail end of the coronavirus and whatnot. But, you know, the I think the genius of Bardstown is you're bringing, you, you have the ability to not rush to market and get as much distribution and ramp up volume because your contract stilling, which makes money, you got a restaurant and a tasting room and a bar and now another bar that's generating money. So you have streams of income that have nothing to do with how many cases of this go to Maryland or Tennessee of this product in our hands because right. they're selling to products that have 50 state distribution. So it's brilliant, actually, in a lot of ways that they can yeah. rank, uh, keep the machines going and keep profit coming in. Absolutely. The, the distillery is what drives the engine, right? If they're going, that can give the blood. If we can have patience in blending, patience in release uh, releases, that yeah. distillery is cranking out incredible juice, then that gives us a ton of freedom to make high-end products. So yeah. it's yeah. it's working for us now. And We're gonna you are. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So this is what I want to know, because I, I think it's so interesting how many different fronts that you guys are attacking. Uh I'm sure that the amount of information that you're able to give us is it's probably not everything that you know, but what, what can you share with us of, of what you got coming up or things that you're thinking about or ideas that are being tossed around or, you know, what's going on yeah. in the minds of the folks over there? There's a, there's a lot, there's a lot, you know, there, there is, um, 
one really cool thing coming out that uh, is is uh, semi public now. It's awesome. Is we broke ground on a bottling facility, um, which what we do in custom distillation, we can now provide in custom bottling, which is awesome. It also means that as a customer, you can do everything on site from distillation um, to to seeing your product in a bottle. Uh, wow. So that's that's a that's a huge development on the on the business side. On the tour side, we have the Pete's Place opening. We're continuing to build Rick houses. We're now putting all the furniture into our visitor center. It's kind of been empty for a while, so we're building out that space. Um, we have bung technologies that we're we're in the process of finalizing um, and announcing uh, where you can have more tracking on your barrel. So say a single barrel program, tracking that from from the very beginning to the end, you know, so you could be sitting in California checking in on your barrel. Um, we're getting closer to being able to finalize What kind that, of details like, could you, could you share? Yeah. What are you looking to track? Like what, what, what information are you looking to give to somebody tracking a single barrel? Well, well, and none, you know, this isn't finalized yet. It's, it's something we're thinking about, but it's all kinds of things from, um, you know, the pressures, the pressure of the day, the, the temperature swings, uh, you know, the alcohol content, you could, you could, you could check in on, on anything, you know, and, and really see in real time, the development of the juice in the barrel and, and how the wow. temperatures affected it. But that's, that's just, you know, something we're, we're, we're still in the developmental phases and early yeah. stages. So, um, and then still picking up awesome partners to distill for and, and creating relationships. They said the upcoming, um, Rum finish and cognac finish; those are going to go into barrel pretty soon. So we're selecting the juice for that. Are those collaborations. Uh, yeah, a uh, uh, rum rum collaboration and a cognac collaboration coming out with uh, some. Can you say who the barrels are? I can't are? say who yeah. yet, but I'll say that uh, they're they're um they're two incredible companies. And um the other big news is Discovery Three and Fusion Three will be coming out this summer. We finalized the blend on Discovery Three. It's got some packaging changes, and then that's going to, I think it's our best versions of those two products Are coming you out. The color of the label? I, I, yes. Cool. I don't know if I'm supposed to announce, but there is, actually, you know what? I think with TTB, it's public information now. So Discovery 3s do having a little bit of a makeover, and it's going to be a. Those other real two are green. I have those two. One and two are green, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, every two of you guys change, and that makes sense, I guess. Well, about positioning the green to our more our true rye when that comes out you know so green being that traditional rye so we're going to more of a crimson with the discovery you guys are going to do a rye whiskey uh yeah they're about two years away on that the, yeah. yeah you're at that year six. Oh, i missed the, yeah. uh, the i missed the rye comment no, 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 i thought no, it was going to be only bourbon is. So we have an awesome 95.5 rye that, that's aging. It's coming along awesome, and that's going to be one of our core products that we come out it's with. It's interesting that you guys chose to do a 95.5 when that yeah. is the MGP and, and virtually every other, even OZ Tyler in Owensboro does a 95.5 that Jacob Call is distilling. Um, yeah. Why not shake it up? Why not? It's, so, it's so interesting. Uh, you're getting into an awesome topic. Uh, so... <laughs> One thing, the, so you got your Kentucky style rye, right? You've got your Rittenhouse, um, you've got your wild turkeys. Those are coming in at like 51%, literally as low rye content as you can be and be a rye. They're beautiful products. But since we have a 36% rye bourbon, yeah, that's only, uh, you know, there you go. Beautiful product. Love that product. Yeah. But it's about it's 51% rye. Exactly. Now we have a 36% rye bourbon. That's only a 15% rye difference in those two products. So we want our rye to be a completely unique product from our true high rye bourbon. And we we love that that you know if you're gonna do rye, let go, it go all the way, man. I like oh, that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's a good point. It's a good point. I think I think the. I'm waiting for some. Who I want to know who's doing the 80/20 rye is what I There's, want to know. Or the or the high wheat rye. like 65. Now high wheat, we have an incredible product. Uh, this will be 
very limited. I'll get you a sample when uh, when it's ready. But it's thirty nine percent wheat, so that's pretty. Uh, it's a wow. bourbon. With, a bourbon? A true bourbon, but thirty nine percent wheat. It's a uh, tropical fruit bomb. It's awesome. Oh my it's God. coming oh. along so well. That's uh, yeah. We actually the uh, Nick Smith, our head distiller, he did that when Steve Nally, our master distiller, was out of town. So him and John Harger, they put together, they come back and, and tasted it blind. He was like, that's incredible. He and they were like, yep. I was like, what the fuck? Are you guys doing? <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. No, I think, I mean, have you, have you guys done anything um, with a high wheat rye, like bringing wheat into the rye whiskey world and seeing? Mm -hmm. Not yet. We're messing around with wheat in a big way. Um, we also have, uh, we're working on um, an all Kentucky product that would be all the all the grains grown in Kentucky, and, and that's going to be a true weeded whiskey. So we're looking at that. We've done a lot with malted barley, too. You know, a single malt. Um, we've done a, around a 57% malt, all kinds of cool malted recipes. So Now, awesome. I just finished my prisoner, and I know that... Uh, you know, uh, shameless plug, uh, Prisoner is available on castcartel.com. So um, if, if what we're about to say intrigues you, you can go online and buy a bottle uh, from Cast Cartel uh, of Prisoner collaboration with Bardstown Bourbon. So tell us about the Prisoner, because I only have the mini bottle. I don't, I can't see the side. I don't know if it has that table. Um, I have to the bottle. Um, it does, it doesn't have the table, but what it does have with transparency is exactly what bourbon went into it. And then it describes, um, the aging process. Um, you know, so you get the age of the bourbon, it says it's an 18 month finish. The coolest thing about the prisoner. So prisoner is, um, a red blend, right? Zinfandel forward. It's around 50% Zinfandel. Uh, five different grapes go into the prisoner wine. So we sourced 40 barrels um, from the Prisoner Wine Company to, to finish bourbon in. But of those 40 barrels we sourced, we kept the ratio of the grapes that went into the wine the same. Right. right? So mm -hmm. the, the Prisoner Wine Company ages some Zinfandel barrels, cab barrels. So if it's 50% Zinfandel, 20 of the barrels we sourced would have been Zinfandel barrels. Oh, aged it all awesome. separately. Yeah, right then blended back it, together. It's perfect. It's perfect. Yeah. So so we don't have it in front of us. So what is what is the bourbon? How old is it? Um, I don't think you can tell us where it's from, but is it a blend of bourbons or is it one bourbon? It's one bourbon, and yeah. it's what we've been getting after on these wine finishes through experiments, finding that this Tennessee bourbon really functions well because the high corn content you're coming in at that 84, 8, 8 mash bill, 84 corn, super high corn, um, and not as old as, so on our spirit collaborations, like that Copper and King's Brandy or Mistel, you're looking at a much older, not much older, but you're going in that 12 year, we do a lot of 12 year, 13 year in the brandies. On these wine finishes, we're in like the eight and nine year range. So this is nine year Tennessee, 18 month finish in 40 different barrels. They're to the same ratio as the prisoner wine. Um, and that's that's just experimentation and seeing what works. And we love, for whatever reason, the sweetness of the corn, it just works with the wine finish. So yeah. uh, that's what we're pursuing on a lot of these now. That's amazing. Cool. Yeah. So that is a Tennessee it's, bourbon. A Tennessee bourbon, which really narrows it down. He's opening the bottle. <laughs> Yeah, well, well we might as well. We don't have much left. I'm, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go for another sip here. To pour this out. Um, got a little stuck. Got a little more. Sure. Yeah, knock it Top out. me off. The reason right, I want you guys. So. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I'll get one out to you. Man. Now, no I, I'm, I'm not, uh, I'm not saying this is true, and you don't have to agree, but I'm, it's. Uh, generally known that very few distilleries in Tennessee bulk produce or have product of that age. So it's safe to say Cascade Hollow is probably the distillery on this, given that, and that's, uh, for those that are not aware, that is Dickel. So Dickel is generally the distiller, but it, you have, you don't have to say <laughs> <what I'm not laughs> That's just, that's just, 
I actually just bought a bottle of Dickel, uh, nine-year-old single barrel, 51.5%. I'm excited huh. to try that. Um, and we have yeah. reviewed a couple other products as well. Now, what's interesting, a nine-year Tennessee like that, you know, match that with the Prisoner wine, you could really see how the product, how it gets there. And what's really cool is, and I did this in an experiment, blind. Yes. I took Prisoner yeah. wine into nine-year-old Tennessee, and I would blind that against this Prisoner. No comparison. Aging it for 18 months, the flavors truly come together in a special way that you can't just emulate by pouring them. Now, here's a wine question. Yeah. How long does the wine rest in the barrels before you get them? Not long. So wine wine aging is typically pretty short, right? Okay. Um, you've got some Riojas that can go crazy long, up to five years, or some Brunellos out of Italy uh, might go three to five years, but that's crazy. That's very long in wine yeah. years. So you're looking at like six months, year, year and a half. That's that's the sweet spot. And it's often not a new barrel, you know, because because can overpower the wine. Like an Armagnac finish we just did, it had probably like a ton of different Armagnacs passed through it of different ages. Um, so it softens up the new wood notes and you get that this richer deeper wine profile out of it because uh, it's less dominated by barrel and more fruit and wine it's a super fruity nose yeah well i think maybe our last couple questions here because we don't want to take too much time is, hey you're good you know the uh the collaborations black and white label um, yeah you've got those... two pretty full bottles <laughs> of these. those are like <laughs> unicorn status now man <laughs> People yeah. ask me, I can't find them. People ask me, I don't know where to get bottles of them. Tell us about these in, in a few words, you know, um, what's special about them? You were there when you made these, you know, tell us about the collaboration one and two, white and black label. Well, that's, you know, that's early days, right? That's, that's the first product out of, out of Bardstown Bourbon Company. Um, uh, Copper and Kings. You've got a brandy finish and a mistel finish. They were filled at the same time, same Indiana bourbon to go go into them. And that really shows what two different flavor profiles. And, and they're kind of like the yin and yang. They're, they're um, the, the brandy, 113 proof, uh, I believe, on the side of that. It's been a while since I've talked about this one. 18-month finish, 113 spice life sizzle. That's the Steve Nally favorite. Me and Steve in the early days used to give like uh, so many talks <laughs> about these. And, and the other one, which was my favorite, 94 proof, 93, 94, Mistel finish. Mistel, yeah. yeah, if you put brandy and grape juice together, right? So unfermented grape juice with brandy, they drink it in the south of France. Uh, that's a Mistel. So it's sweetness, it's grapiness, it's round. It's almost like a dessert bourbon, the Mistel finish. Um, nothing else really tastes like that that Mistel. And then the brandy's just an awesome, awesome. Did you release a double Mistel ever or not? We did, yeah, we did two barrels total of that white label, putting it back into New American Oak. So you took all that sweetness and grape. And uh, you put this smoky richness underneath it. There's still a few bottles at our distillery currently. All right, save there. one. I'll, I'll give you my Yeah, card. what color is that one? <laughs> <laughs> That's purple. That's the royalty label. It's like Ooh, okay, purple, okay. rich, Sold. top shelf. Sold, yeah. <laughs> I'm literally giving you my, I'm texting my credit card after this. Um, <laughs> yeah. So I, those. I that with you guys. Um, you, had it, you hadn't released it yet, but you had it in one of your sample bottles in the back. Okay. Age with all the other rare, you know, uh, odds and end bourbons. So again, you know, but parting words, I guess, because, uh, you know, this is just one part of the podcast, but you know, what, uh, what do you want to say to the people that haven't tried Bardstown? Where do they start? You know, what's, what's the best way for them to experience the brand and, and what do you, what should yeah, they what do you want to leave them with? Yeah. I think, I think in this from? time we're, yeah, during this time, the best thing to do is, is check us out on our website, on our Instagram. We're doing all kinds of virtual cocktail classes, tours, tastings. We want to reach you in this time. And then when we get past this, come see us. Come see the distillery. Come have the experience. Um, see it in person. Try the bourbons. Um, 
while you're doing the virtual stuff, go to your liquor store, pick it up. Um, you can you can order online. Uh, you know a lot about that. I'm sure you can oh, yeah. point in the right direction. And um, you know, just just see what we're about. Uh, you know, transparency, collaboration, and innovation. That's us. I love that. Great I words. love that. Well, thank you so Dan, much, Danny, so much. for coming on. It's it's Work. an absolute pleasure to have you, and thank you for speaking about something that you're clearly so very passionate about. So that's that's really awesome. Awesome. I can't thank you enough for having me. So yeah. Cheers.